Well, good morning and welcome. I hope your Christmas this year, although, you know, maybe a little different, was a meaningful time as you remember and celebrated the birth of Jesus, God with us. Hey, if you are new to our online service, welcome. We are so glad you found us. And to find out lots more about Life Bible Fellowship Church, go to our website, lbf.church. As we wrap up 2020, I just wanted to share a couple of items by way of encouragement and for you to see how God has been at work in our church during this time of COVID-19. When the lockdown started in March, we were able to quickly transition to an online worship service and have kept that going now for the past nine months. We continue with life groups and other small groups using the ability we now have to hold meetings virtually. Then, when the lockdown was over, we saw people continue to meet virtually or begin to meet in person in backyards all over our area. You know, we've also had an active youth ministry which started out as only virtual, but has been meeting in person since July. We've also had online Life Kids ministry along with parent resources provided every week. And just recently, we were able to begin an in-person Sunday ministry for children who are two years old through kindergarten. Our financial giving has been a testimony of a United Church family giving as God leads. So far, we've seen our general fund hold its own and meet a revised budget. We saw an additional $34,000 come in for the Kenya Project when our goal was only 20,000. We saw our Thanksgiving giving project with a goal of feeding 600 families burst to being able to feed over 950 families. To me, this is a testimony to how you as part of our church family is trusting in God as you give compassionately to others in need. You know, we've also seen our online attendance remain strong with an average of about 500 views every week. Once we started our in-person services outdoors, we've seen a steady growth in numbers, now averaging about 490 people. Now, if you add these two numbers together, it tells me we are growing in attendance as a church during this time. Yes, I'm confident that we have seen new people come and be part of the LBF church family. In fact, our next Meet LBF event will be held in January as we move towards adding new members to our church. Then, in an effort to better serve our community, in July, we opened the Upland Community Resource Center located in downtown Upland. Since July, as a church, we have helped 580 families avoid homelessness or find a job or find other resources to help them over the hurdle that COVID or other life situations has created. Listen, (laughs) I could go on with a lot more of God's work among us during COVID-19, but I think it's accurate to say the Life Bible Fellowship Church has not been closed. We've just adapted and kept our mission moving forward while recognizing that there was a need to keep us as safe as possible and also demonstrate the love of Jesus to our neighbors and community. You see, our mission is strong and through your support in many different ways, we are ready to start a new year in a very good place. But before I go, I just want to remind you as we end this year for your giving to be eligible for tax deductions, it must be received by December 31st. You can give by using our LBF app or website. Now it's time to worship through music. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our online service. It is right after Christmas, and I hope you guys had a great Christmas under these kind of different circumstances. Nick, did you guys have a good time? We did. That's awesome. What'd you get up to? Not much. No? Stockings, lights, trees. That's good. That's great. Well, we had a great time too. Lots of good time with family. And, you know, this year was a different year, but that's okay. And God is working and moving in spite of the differences. And I actually think in a lot of ways, He's kind of been using this time to refine us to draw us to Him. And so we're excited to get to worship today. We're excited that you're joining with us. So we're gonna sing this first song is based on the Nicene Creed. And people all over the world have been declaring what they believe by saying the Nicene Creed together. And so as we sing this, we declare it from deep within our hearts.
Sing this with us. Our Father everlasting, the old created one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior, I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, I'm God is three and one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe Judging, I defend, suffered, and crucified. Forgiveness is in here. Descended into darkness, heroes in glorious light. Forever seated. that you are the risen Savior, the Lord of all, King of all kings. We pray that you would remind us of your goodness, of your faithfulness to us. 
As we look into your word this morning, it's in your name, King Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning. For this Sunday, uh, right after Christmas and right, right between New Year's, as we look forward to this next year and as we finish off 2020, we want to do a service that's a little bit different. And so what you're going to experience during this uh, online service is you're going to experience a real opportunity to participate. Uh, this is not a service that you're just meant to watch and observe, but really to engage in. And so at the end of the service, we're going to have some more chance to sing in response to all that God has done and all that he is. And then during the message time, it's going to be split into three parts where I'm going to read some scripture, talk about some things, and then lead us in a time where we're going to take five minute breaks in between to be able to respond to the Lord in light of what we've read and in light of what I've talked about. And uh, the, the three parts are real simple. You're, you're going to be invited in this service to do three things. You're going to be invited to look back, to look around, and to look ahead. And we're going to start in this first section by talking about looking back, by talking about reflecting on this past year. Um, uh, as we get to the end of 2020, obviously it's been a crazy year. I'll, I'll talk about that in a few minutes but we don't want to miss the good ways that God has been at work. We want to be able to look back and to give thanks and to learn from the good things that he's done. So I want to read for us to get us into that mode. I want to read for us Psalm 103, and I'm going to read the whole thing, um, all 22 verses. I want you just to take this in. Um, try not to listen to this reading, just anticipating what, what's he going to say? What are we going to talk about? Just take in God's word. Maybe you even want to sit down and close your eyes and take in these words um, as I read from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows it over and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. And what we get in this beautiful and amazing psalm from David is we get a recounting of reasons to praise and thank God. Um, David is modeling for us the idea of looking back and, and looking back very broadly on who God is and what he's done, but also looking back specifically into the past as he talks about Moses and he talks about Israel and talks about how God has been at work. 
Now, I know it's, it's fashionable to talk about 2020 and just to rail on it and complain about it. Um, and, and I'm not blind to the reasons for this. This has been a wild year, especially when it comes to COVID and the sadness of dealing with death of people that we know or of just dealing with sickness in ourselves or in people that we care about. And to go along with that, the upheaval and maybe the loss of income or just the uncertainty or the loss of opportunities and things that we were meant to do and feeling stuck at home, all of that has made the year difficult. And then there's been racial unrest and political unrest and social unrest and a a lot of uncertainty as far as how we move forward. So it's easy to look at 2020 and say, good riddance, leave that in the rear view mirror. I I don't need it anymore. I'm, I'm ready for the next year. But that would be a mistake because God has been at work this last year. God is not silent. He does not sleep. He is at work and he has been at work. And it would be really sad if we moved on from this year without looking back, without pausing to say, how has God been at work? Um, Number one, so that we can give him thanks for the ways that he's been at work. And number two, so that we can learn the lessons that he has for us through the ways that he's been at work. Um, I I, I can't speak to every person's life and how God has been at work, but there are definitely some ways that through this strange year, God has given us some opportunities to grow and to respond to him. Um, One for sure is that God has given us the opportunity through having different things that are normally a part of our everyday life stripped away. He has given us the opportunity to really make sure our identity is rooted in Christ. That's true of us as individuals. That's true of us as a church family. As a church family, some of the activities and the practices that we normally have as a church have been taken away and it's caused us to have to dig deep and say, who are we really in Christ? What is our core identity and how do we live that out? And that's true of us as individual believers also. That's an opportunity and we don't wanna move on too quickly without embracing that and responding to that. Throughout this whole year, God's also given us the opportunity to slow down and to get to look at what things are crowding out what God has for us in our lives so that we can prioritize. And instead of having our lives filled with activities every evening for for us or for our kids and just filled with all of the noise to keep ourselves busy, some of those things were taken away and we didn't even have the option of doing them. And before rushing into saying, as soon as they're back, they're back in my life, to learn from this opportunity and say, maybe some of those things aren't ever meant to come back. Maybe there's a new pace of life. But one of the opportunities that God has given us for those of us who have families and have kids in the home is to remember again, that the job of discipling our kids towards Jesus does not belong to a Sunday school teacher as, as valuable as they may be. It belongs to those of us who are parents. And one of the things that I've loved is hearing stories about how parents are investing more deeply in their family and in their kids and reading scripture together and doing devotionals together and praying with their kids. God has been at work and how sad if we were to miss it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna follow David's lead and do what he did. And we're gonna take five minutes. Um, if, If you're not watching this when it's premiering, You can pause the video if you wanna go longer than five minutes. But what I wanna invite you to is just silent, quiet reflection, asking God to remind you and to show you how he's been at work this last year. Silence isn't something we're really good at in the United States in 2020, but let's pause and have silent reflection And when God brings something to mind, when God opens your heart to a way that he's been at work, give him thanks and reflect on how you can learn and how you can grow through what he's done this last year.
Well, we took some time to look back um, and I pray that that was fruitful for you. And now we're gonna take some time to look around. Um, And what that means is we're gonna look around at how we can have an impact on others in light of what God has done in our lives. And what, one of the things that, that we believe at Life Bible Fellowship Church is we believe that God is at work in individual lives. Um, we're, we're not just a bunch of faceless people in a church and God cares about the church, but he doesn't care about the people. We believe that God has called each one of us by name. We believe that God numbers the hairs on our heads. We believe that we have a personal relationship with the God of the universe through what he's done in Jesus. And so we believe in a very personal spirituality, a very personal relationship with God. And at the same time, it's never meant to be a private spirituality or a private relationship with God. So what we just did in reflecting privately is good, but what we're also going to be invited to do is to speak out to others the ways that God has been at work. And once again, I I want to read um, a psalm, an extended passage of scripture. I'm going to read all of Psalm 145 and uh, 145. And like before, um, I want to just invite you to take this in. If you have a Bible and you want to read along as I read, because that helps you, that's great. If you want to just sit there, close your eyes, and really listen to God's word, you can do that also. Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will, pro- and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all, He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them the food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him, in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. And I'm not sure how much you picked up on the theme going all throughout these 21 verses, but there is the constant theme of speaking out to other people what God has done. In fact, the last verse says, my mouth will speak in praise to the Lord. Earlier, all the way back in verse four, he says, one generation commends your works to another. And maybe even where you're sitting right now, I'm not sure if you're by yourself or you're with other people, maybe you're sitting with your family and you have multiple generations there and you've had that experience. This is what David is saying in the Psalm. This is what is meant to happen. That one generation has seen God's goodness and they can tell about it to the next generation. And then that generation grows up and they experience God's goodness in a very real way. They taste and they see that the Lord is good and they pass it on to the next generation. And it's not just generation to generation, it's a spreading message of God's goodness. That's what we're involved in. Privately reflecting and thinking about what God has done is very good. Taking the next step 
and proclaiming what he's done to others is even better. And, you know, I, I think probably, I, I think I'm safe saying most of us, um, most of us as believers today, um, we feel convicted that we don't talk about Jesus enough with non-Christians, um, that we get nervous, that we get scared, we get anxious, we feel like it's going to be socially awkward. And we, we constantly are thinking, I, I should be talking about Jesus more with my classmates and more with my coworkers and more with my neighbors, but I, I'm just not quite doing it. Um, that's good, but here's what I want to say. Um, I'm not even convinced we talk about Jesus that much with other Christians, let alone with non-Christians. There's a lot of times that we get together with other Christians and we talk about our families and we talk about our jobs and we talk about maybe wholesome movies and TV shows that we're watching or wholesome music that we're listening to. And we talk about sports and we talk about good things that we're trying to do in the life, our, our lives. And we talk about politics and we talk about things that maybe are all with, within the realm where they're not sinful, devious things. But do we talk a lot about Jesus? Do we talk a lot about who he is and what he's doing in our lives and how we feel like he's leading us in different ways? You know, maybe one of the reasons why we don't spend a ton of time talking to non-Christians about Jesus is because we don't spend a ton of time talking to Christians about Jesus. We don't spend a lot of time proclaiming his goodness just to one another in our families and in our life groups and in our Bible studies. And when we're getting together with friends who are also believers in Jesus, who are brothers and sisters in Christ, who are people that, that it would feel safe to be able to talk about Jesus with, we, we don't do it nearly as much as we could and as we should. And so here's what we're going to do now as a next step in this service. Um, and I recognize I'll, I'll speak first to, to any of you who are watching this and you're by yourself. Um, if you're watching this and you're by yourself, here's what I want you to do during this next segment of time. Think back to what the Lord spoke to you and brought to mind during that first section. Ways that he's been at work in your life. And, and I want you to grab a piece of paper or if you journal, grab a journal. Even if you want to pull up a Word document and write it up there, that, that's all fine. I want you just to write down the things, journal the things, record the ways that you've seen God at work this last year. The enemy would love to pluck that away and have you forget about that. So right, whether you're doing bullet points, just giving a list, whether you're writing it more in, in paragraph form and just reflecting on what God has done, take some time to get it down on paper. And then what I'm gonna invite you to do after the services, consider who God is calling you to share that with. Maybe you're meant to call up a friend and say, I just want to share this with you. Or you're meant to email it to your life group and say, I just want to share with you the things that I wrote down about how God has been at work. Don't keep it to yourself. And now for those of you who are with others, whether it's with one other person or a group in your family or a group of other people, what I want to invite you to do during this segment of time is just turn to one another and take turns sharing something that God brought to mind before when you were reflecting. Um, you may not have time to share everything that you thought of, but share something. And once again, if, if you're not watching this on the premiere, if you want to pause, go ahead and pause so that you can have longer and so that everybody can share a way that they saw God is at work so that you can give thanks to him and learn from the ways that he's been at work around us.
Well, we've taken time to look back at ways that God has been at work during 2020. We've taken time to look around and to look at the people that God has brought into our sphere and to share with them the good things that he's done. And now we're gonna take time to look ahead because it's almost 2021, it's almost a new year, and it's always a good time to think about new ways that God is at work because God is always doing new things. The Holy Spirit is always taking ground. God is very active. So it's not that something magical happens when the new year comes, but it's an appropriate time for us to think, what, what are the ways that God is calling me towards growth? Um, and this time I'm just gonna read a very short passage, just two verses out of the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter two, verses six and seven. The apostle Paul writes, so then just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Paul says, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, you received him. We just celebrated this at Christmas, the the reception of Jesus Christ into the world. We have received him as Lord. We have been transformed by him. We have been forgiven by him. We've been adopted into the family of God through Jesus. We've been given an inheritance in heaven through Jesus. We've been given the Holy Spirit because he ascended to heaven and sent us the spirit. We have received, and he's saying, all right, just as at conversion, when he came to faith in Jesus, just as when you were born again, you received him as Lord, He then says, continue to live your lives in him, which in the Greek would literally be, literally be continue to walk with him. Um, When you hear people talking about their walk with Christ, that's very biblical terminology. It's the idea that we're walking with him. It's a relational term that you're walking side by side with someone. And it means that you're going somewhere it means that you've got to keep in step if, if you're going to be together in a similar way to how Paul in Galatians talks about keeping in step with the Spirit. Continue to walk with Jesus. There's forward motion. There's growth that's meant to happen in our lives. In verse 7, when he talks about being rooted and built up in him, that he is our foundation. He's not just an appendage in our life. He is the center of our life. So we're being rooted in him. We're being built up in him. And then he says, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. We're strengthened in the truth of who Jesus is that we get through the scriptures. And we're also overflowing with thankfulness because of all that he's done. The Christian life is meant to be marked by growth by forward movement. So we've looked back and we've had the opportunity to give thanks and to learn from the ways that God has been active and at work during a very strange year. We've had the chance to look around and say, these are the people that God has brought into my life and I wanna proclaim his goodness and his work to other people so that they can see and rejoice and learn from that also. And now we wanna look ahead and say, what are the new things that God seems to be doing in my life that he wants me to grow in? Um, and, and I'll say right now, man, as, as we look to the future, we all know the future is not in our hands. Ho- hopefully that's something that 2020 reminded us of if we didn't already know. That the future is not in our control. So here's the deal. You might be sitting here on, on December 27th or whenever you're watching this and be thinking, I, I have a pretty good idea of what this next year is gonna be like. And who knows, by, by January 12th, you could be like, whoa, game changer. I have no idea what this year is gonna be like. We, we know that that's a reality. So I don't want us to be presumptuous. And at the same time, I want us to look look and, and discern, here's what God seems to be bringing to mind. Here are things that God seems to, to want to refine and grow me in. Here's an area of sin that I've been kind of fighting against and kind of trying to stop. I mean, it, it's time to take extreme measures. It, it's time to gouge out the eye and cut off the hand. It's time to get accountability. It's, it's time to do something significant so that the sin is no longer hampering me and weighing me down. Um, maybe it has to do with that there's some relationship. Um, We we know that loving God has to do with loving other people and maybe there's a strained relationship or just sort of a a shallow relationship. And it's time to give that relationship the attention that it needs to heal or just to give that relationship the intentionality that it needs to grow. You may say, my relationship with my kids right now, it's fine, it's peaceful, we have fun together, but maybe God is calling you to be much more purposeful in discipling them and leading them towards Jesus in intentional ways. Maybe there's a strained relationship that you need to take time to pursue healing in. 
Um, Or maybe it just has to do with greater bold acts of faith that God is calling you to when it comes to financial giving or when it comes to serving within the body of Christ and within the community or or when it comes to, to boldly speaking God's message to your neighbors and to your coworkers and to others. God is calling us all to new and fresh steps of faith. And we might not know what all of those are, but we can have a pretty good idea Because at the core, we are all called to put Jesus more and more at the center of our lives so that our lives really reflect the idea that Jesus is king and that he's calling the shots. Um, As we look ahead to 2021, I I also want to let you know about something else that you'll be hearing more about. Um, At LBF Church, we always have a Bible reading plan going. That's just a constant. We, we always are inviting people to read God's word on their own because we believe that deep transformation and greater closeness with God happens through that. So we, we've had a plan that we're just finishing up now where we've read through the whole Bible in 2020. And some of you have gone along with that. As we enter into 2021, we're gonna start a new a three-month plan, just January through March, um, where we're gonna slow down. We're gonna read through Luke and we're gonna read through Acts during those three months. Um, And here's what I want to invite you to. God is calling you to growth. Some of you are reading the Bible regularly. You have that habit set in motion. Um, Here's what I want to say. If you don't have that habit set in motion, now is the time. And if you join with this Bible reading plan, you'll also be reading along with a whole bunch of brothers and sisters in Christ right here in our church community as we join together and look to learn from God's word. A uh, new year is a great time to start a new habit. And it's hard to think of a better habit than regularly interfacing with the word of God to hear what he says, to remember the world as it is through his eyes and to experience his great love for us so that we can respond to him. Let's look at 2020 as a great opportunity for growth, whether we recognize the ways that God is gonna grow us or not. And so here's what we wanna do in looking ahead. Um, After this next segment of time, the the band is going to come out and lead us in some songs of response. And I really invite you, give your heart to that time, participate in that time. But before, we're going to take just another time of silent prayer. And during this time of silent prayer, the prayer that I want you to pray is to ask God to make clear to you ways that he is calling you towards growth this next year. He will bring opportunities for growth, whether you want them or not. But there are probably some things that are going to come to mind that are pretty clearly things that need to change in your life. What kind of growth is God calling you to? Pray that he would make that clear for you. Wait in the silence. Allow there to be some room and some space for him to speak. And look to have a responsive heart to whatever it is that he brings up. And then look to participate in the response through the singing that we'll do afterwards.
When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come. Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. Hear such much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus Oh, it's all about you Our King of endless world No one could express How much you deserve Though I'm weak and poor All I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my just where you're at now, just begin to ask the Lord, where have I made things about me? Where have I been my own self-sufficiency? And where do you want to come? Where do you want to bring healing? Where do you want to develop trust in me? So just take that time now. Jesus, we believe that you're faithful. You're for us, and you want to grow us. And your word says that you are faithful, that you started a good work in us, and you are faithful to bring that to completion. And so we pray that your goodness would be at work in our hearts and in our lives. You would tear away branches. You would prune areas in our lives that do not bring you glory, that you want to change into a Christ-like reality for your kingdom to come and to move in our lives. Pray that we would be open to that, Lord. We 
trust that you are faithful. You're looking into my heart, looking into my heart. You're looking into my heart, looking into my heart, oh God. I'll bring you more than a song, now I'll bring you more than a song, I'll bring you more than a song.
Trust him for that. Be blessed, guys. Have a great week.